Hey everyone, welcome back. So it's been quite a while since I did a comic book collection video, so I figured why not come back to these videos with my favorite um, comic book collection, which is, which is obviously of the Punisher. And so to start things off, we have a reprint of his first appearance in the Amazing Spider-Man 129, and this is the Marvel Milestone edition. I think this came... Um, this was released in the mid-90s, mid maybe early 90s. And yeah, I obviously can't afford the um, original first appearance. It's so far out of my league that I'm probably never gonna own a copy of it. But I'm fine with this facsimile edition. And I have it reprinted in, in hardcover format so I can read it anytime I want. So I'm fine with that. And then we come to the first Punisher... Um, solo title which was his first miniseries which is mostly known as the circle of blood storyline and this was originally planned to be a four issue miniseries but they expanded it to five because it was um, more successful than uh, editorial at marvel expected and it was written by stephen grant and the uh, most of the art or the major artist on this is Mike Zack, so here we have some nice Mike Zack covers accompanying this. So here's issue one, and I like to keep these in um, comic book top loaders, because I don't want them to get um, any more wear than they already have. So here we have issue two, obviously, the iconic issue number three with a nice Mike Zack cover, issue number four and the final issue number five and after the success of this series which was released in 1986 they immediately started working on a, a re, um, real ongoing Punisher series and this started in 1987 also here's issue number one and most of the um, issues on this whole series which has 104 books and I have it complete. Um, most of this was written by Mike Barron and later some other um, authors stepped in. So here's obviously issue one with, a, with its iconic cover. Two. So I'm not gonna name um, or number all the issues because that's a bit pointless as you can see which numbers they are and the artwork on these early issues was done by Klaus Jansen as were the first covers until issue 6 so here we have a nice early Mike Mignola cover really cool cover in my opinion then we have Puncher squaring off against some terrorists Issue number eight, and I believe issue number eight is where Will's Portatio um, took over the art duties from Klaus Jensen. And here we have a nice um, Punisher vs. Daredevil cover. And Will's Portatio stayed on the art for, I don't know, something like 12 issues or so. And with issue 14, the Kingpin becomes one of the um, more prolific antagonists of uh, the Punisher. And this is basically the storyline where he goes up against the Kingpin. And in issue 18 they truly face off and the Kingpin wins. I mean, he doesn't kill Frank, obviously, but Frank loses the fight to the Kingpin. Issue 21 with an Eric Larson cover and another Eric Larson cover. Eric Larson was also on the interiors for a few issues, I think six or seven, maybe. Here we have issue 24, guest starring the Shadow Masters, which was basically only a Punisher spin-off that lasted uh, for one miniseries. We'll see that later somewhere in this 
um, not in this video, but when I show off more of my Punisher collection, you have the giant size issue 25, still with Eric Larson on the cover art. Punisher against the Navy. <laughs> and what I think is funny is that the numbering of the U-boat is 616, which is obviously the universe numbering. Then we have a Acts of Vengeance crossover, so Punisher goes up against some Doombots. This was a two-issue crossover and Acts of Vengeance basically spent through a lot of Marvel books where um, all the supervillains teamed up and each supervillain went against, uh, fought against a hero that wasn't uh, usually his um, nemesis, I guess you could say. So here's part two of this actual Acts of Ven Vengeance crossover. Number 30. And here Punisher goes up against the biker gang. Number 31 and 32. And in 33 he goes up against the Reavers which are usually, um, obviously, X-Men enemies. This is still part of the Reaver storyline. Then we get the Jigsaw puzzle, so basically the return of um, Punisher's most prolific nemesis, which is obviously Jigsaw, and we hadn't seen him in this series so far, but he was part of the miniseries before that. And here we have a nice Mark Texera cover on the Jigsaw puzzle storyline, which as you can see lasted for six issues. And with most of these, or not with most of these, all of these, it's been quite a while since I've read them, so I have a loose recollection of some stuff, but definitely not of everything. And to be honest, there are a few cool storylines in this, but overall, yeah, I guess you can only recommend this series to people who really are fans of The Punisher, otherwise it's probably not that interesting for people. Here we have a nice Andy Cubot cover. And this issue is interesting because this was, at least for me, because this was very hard to find in Germany. Basically, the um, customs offices um, in Germany always um, cash in books with um, swastikas. They don't like swastikas. This is a prohibited uh, image in Germany and they're very picky with how the swastika is portrayed and where it can be portrayed and it's legal or where it's illegal. So the, this issue was very hard to find in Germany, even though the uh, swastika is obstructed. Then we have Punisher <laughs> going to Iraq. Surely a very political correct book. Issue 94 and the anniversary 50th issue with a nice cover. I think that's Michael Golden, although I might be wrong. The cover artists at this um, time with Marvel were usually not credited within the books. And here begins a new storyline, The Final Days. So now we are at issue 54, which continues the final days storyline. And after the um, last Jigsaw storyline, he was um, he frequently appeared in the Punisher books, which wasn't the case up until this storyline. And here we have a really weird photo cover, which was also very unusual. They rarely did stuff like this. And what's really interesting, this is probably the first ever Punisher variant cover, at least as far as I know. So as you can see, this is a variant to issue 57. It has this brown um, cardboard wraparound cover, which is uh, modeled after a dead or alive 
poster obviously and what's interesting the regular photo cover is still in this book it's just behind the cardboard cover was also not that easy to find here in Germany then we have an, a nice painted cover don't know the artist though another Texera Mark Texera cover and here we have the infamous blackface storyline where Punisher basically in the previous storyline he was this very disfigured due to attacks from Jigsaw and so a doctor basically fixed him up but when he comes out of the um, yeah, when the operation is finished or the healing process is finished, he's suddenly black. So, one of the dumbest blackface ideas ever. But in hindsight, I have to admit, this book caught a lot of um, heat because it has a blackface storyline. But I think it's a bit blown out of proportion. I mean, he doesn't. Um, apply makeup to be blackface and go undercover in a gang or stupid shit like this it just happens to be yeah some sort of incident still a really weird story to be honest and it's a crossover with um, Luke Cage and it lasted three issues this is the issue where Punisher basically goes white again because the effect from the operation simply fades away really weird one and here we have another nice Texera cover then we have the Euro hit storyline where Punisher basically went to Europe and fought different um, European villains basically and he went through several countries in Germany to uncover I think it's a drug traffic trafficking operation so we have appearances from uh, Tarantula and Batroc. Tarantula, I think, or maybe he's Mexican, I'm not sure. But I think he is supposed to be Spanish and um, Batroc of, of, um, obviously is a French man. <laughs> Issue number seven of that. Then we have... Um, some really cool stuff so this is where um, I think a few issues before that Mike Barron stepped off the book as uh, the writer and from then on then Abnett and Andy Len Lenning sometimes Chuck Dixon and Stephen Grant took over and this is basically where the storyline started to get good so because they introduced this um, police agency, which is called Vigil, which exclusively hunts basically the Punisher. I mean, they are an anti-vigilante -vigil task force, but yeah, they mostly go up against the Punisher. And then we come to my favorite book from this series, and basically that's because this is my original copy I bought off the uh, shelf of a comic book store back in 1993 I think I was 12 years old so this was the first original Punisher comic I ever owned and it's still the the same copy and I just love this cover I love the use of the silver foiling I mean sure it's a gimmick cover but in my opinion a very well used cover I like that the artwork is a bit toned down not that much colors. I like the lighting on his face, which resembles a skull, and obviously the nice silver foiling on the knife. So, a really cool cover, and probably my favorite gimmick cover of all time. Mostly due to nostalgia, obviously, but still, really nice cover. So, then we have issue 76 survival, three parter. And more one shots and this is also a storyline that I really like I really like the um, over-the-top artwork of Huang Nguyen I hope I pronounced that name right and so when I had a chance to buy a signed issue of this which came with a certificate of a 
authenticity from dynamic forces i obviously had to pick this one up it wasn't too expensive though i've paid like five euros maybe 10 euros at most and it's been yeah, probably 15 years since i bought the book then we have um, the firefight storyline where punisher go again goes up against vigil and then starts the suicide run storyline which was a 10 parter and basically a crossover with all the with the other three ongoing Punisher series at the time, which were War Journal and Warzone, which we'll take a look after this series. And me personally, I le really liked Suicide Run. I have to reread it, but it's basically several um, imposters of the Punisher pop up and he goes into hiding. And yeah, it's a very convoluted storyline, but with nice action and as you can see, we only have four issues of the 10 issue run in the regular Punisher series. The others are within the other series. Punisher and Scuba Gear. And this is also a cover I really like. Nice bit Sienkiewicz cover. And we have the No Rules storyline number 96 so now we're getting to the final stretch of this series so here's issue 97 issue 98 99 and here we have for example um, in my opinion at least a bad representation for a gimmick cover so the whole cover is silver foiling with um, changes in texture to represent the artwork which is based on but yeah I feel like you can't really make out a lot of it and um, also the gun pointed at the reader basically also feels really weird to me and um, there's also a variant cover of this because they did basically a regular cover which is one of the best covers from this series with artwork from Michael Golden and that's basically the only book from the series that I'm missing it's quite expensive between 50 and 100 bucks nowadays I think and yeah maybe at some point I have to yeah, just bite the bullet and buy it because I really want that cover but yeah I'm still missing that and they did this because at this point people were pretty annoyed with the um, gimmick covers and their um, higher pricing so they basically offered a regular version for people who didn't want to shell out four bucks for this issue while the regular issue I think only cost two bucks maybe and so now we're getting into the final stretch um, nice uh, ah, bullseye cover by Frank Terran and now we're getting to the countdown so these are the last two issues from this series and this was again a crossover which went um, through Warzone and War Journal also so the remaining issues of this crossover will be in a later part and then we have the annuals so this series had seven annuals obviously these annuals um, are not really part of the bigger storyline they're mostly um, crossovers with other series which was something that marvel did a lot in the uh, late 80s early 90s with their annuals so here we have a crossover with the evolutionary war atlantis attacks with a guest appearance of moon knight life form part one of four the van strocker ban uh, gambit <laughs> bandit <laughs> crossover with daredevil and cap obviously then we have the System Bytes Part 1 Annual. 
and then in 1993 they um, stopped doing the crossovers with their annuals and put in trading cards. I don't have the trading card in this book, obviously it's in a binder. So we have a um, basically rookie card, so in this book it's from this one, I think he's from this character, he's called Eradicator, but he was a one-off character, so I don't think he was ever used again after this book. And then we come to the final annual from 94, which is a throwback to the Eurohit storyline, so basically, as they call it, Eurohit 94. And yeah, that's it for the first part of my uh, Punisher collection. So next up will be War Journal and Warzone. So now we're taking a look at the second and third ongoing Punisher series. The second one was Punisher War Journal, which started in 1988. And the early issues all have Jim Lee artwork and um, the stories were written by Carl Potts. So first we have number one. Number two already with a Daredevil crossover. Number three. And as you can see, nice Jim Lee and Carl Potts covers. Here we have the first crossover with Wolverine, which is um, called the African Saga. And this went on for two issues. Another nice Jim Lee cover. Black Widow crossover. Punisher vs. Bushwhacker and again Punisher vs. Bushwhacker crossover with Spider-Man on issue 14 and 15 and here we have a nice Mark Texera cover on issue 16 another Jim Lee cover more Jim Lee with Klaus Jensen together Punisher vs. the French Legion. And here we also have a very nice storyline that I like, which is called the Sicilian Saga, where Punisher basically goes back to the roots of his family and wipes out some mafia goons in Italy. <laughs> went on for three issues. Nice Ghost Rider crossover on issue 29 and issue 30 with cool Michael Golden covers. Then we get to issue 31 with a really nice Joe Jusco cover which was probably planned for another series because usually, usually you don't have these nice painted covers on this or on, on regular ongoing series. And there was a Punisher magazine which always had these painted covers, so I assume these were originally planned for the magazine series, which I think at this point had been cancelled. So another nice Joe Jusco. Not sure who this artist is. Nice John Beatty cover. A weird photo cover with a wedding cake. <laughs> Another nice painted, uh, painted cover. Don't know who the artist is though. And at this point we're getting John Romita Jr. covers. Then we have the Dead Man's Hand crossover which went um, through Punisher War Journal, the Daredevil and the Nomad series. So we have three issues of these, this nine or ten part storyline. And then we have the anniversary issue number 50 with a nice embossed cover. Also really cool artwork in my opinion. Issue 51 
issue 52 and Punisher vs. the Hillbilly family <laughs> also rather gruesome stuff as far as I can remember then we have issue 56 57 another crossover with Ghost Rider and Daredevil which goes on through issue 58 59 and a nice suicide run one silver foil cover on issue 61 and I've also got the dynamic forces signed book for this signed by Chuck Dixon and Gary Quapp Chich, I'm not sure, <laughs> maybe another name that I butchered and I changed this, originally the um, Dynamic Forces always come with a round foil sticker but they usually have very bad bags so I bagged it again Suicide Run Part 4, Part 7, the regular cover to Part 10 and the die cut cover for Part 10 which has the regular cover on the inside but without the lettering and everything. Then we have another cool storyline that I really liked back in the day, Pariah. This is also a really nice cover I think. And again one of my original books I had since my childhood. 67. Part 4, crossover with Spider-Man. And then comes the next storyline, which is fi Final Entry, another one where Punisher goes up against Vigil, or is hunted by Vigil. Then we have 75, with a real nice Mark Texera homage cover to the original miniseries, issue 3. Great looking cover with Lynn, Lynn Michaels, I guess. I think the female Punisher was called. Maybe I got that wrong. <laughs> oh no, I don't. <laughs> Punisher War Journal 76. 77, where Punisher goes up against Lynn Michaels. And she basically took this series over for the last few issues until, until the final storyline, which is Countdown. And here's Countdown Part 3 and Part Z 0, which was the final issue of this series. So now we're getting to Warzone, which is the third Punisher ongoing series. And the first issue has a nice die cut cover by John Romita Jr. And um, the first storyline is also a very famous Punisher storyline where he goes undercover in a Mafia family called the Carbrons and he basically hooks up with a, with a woman from the family which is called Rosalita Carbon I think and which becomes a, a villain for the later part of the series and also nice John Romita Jr. covers with Klaus Jensen And then we get to the next storyline, I forgot how it's called, but it's a really interesting one where Punisher is basically brainwashed and in sort of a village where all people have been brainwashed and he tries to regain his memory and it's, I don't remember really, but I think it's some kind of social project where they try to um, rehabilitate criminals And this is the issue where he finally comes back to his personality. Then we have some nice Michael Golden covers. Another crossover with Wolverine. Again, Huang Guyen covers. Which I also really like. Even a 
if they're very stylized, especially this one with the big machine gun. <laughs> Just so menacing. And then we come to the suicide um, run issues within Warzone. So first off we have part 2 with a nice gold foil cover. And now we're getting to the final run of Warzone. So here's suicide run number 5, suicide run number 8 with a nice painted cover. Issue 26, 27, 28, 29. 30. Um, then with issue 31 we get a new, uh, another really nice storyline, River of Blood, with artwork by Joe Kubert and written by Chuck Dixon, where he goes to Russia. Another Mark Texera cover, Dark Judgment storyline. And then we get to the final issue of Punisher Warzone 41, which is part 2 of Countdown. And finally we have two Punisher Warzone annuals. Punisher War Journal didn't get any annuals, so we have the 93 annual and the 94 annual. So yeah, that's basically it for part 1 of my Punisher collection videos. Um, thanks for watching and maybe till next time. Bye bye.